Greetings adventure travelers and fellow keepers of the lake, how are you all doing? Welcome. This is the second video in the series about encounter design. Well, not really encounter design, that's maybe more of like an official title. More like me sharing what me and my party have been through, what I've been playing around with when I started DMing. These moments were very special for me and my party, so I wanted to immortalize them in a way by making videos about them. And of course, you might learn something from them Feel them as a matter of fact, uh, use them in your own games, reskin them, play around with those mechanics. Or just watch this video for entertainment while you're eating breakfast uh, so your lizard brain uh, releases more dopamine, as I usually do. I want to show you something, uh, a special encounter in particular. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Just a quick note, when I was filming these encounters, I thought I would make uh, one big video, which will have like four or five encounters. Turns out I spent like 10 minutes talking about each of those, so I decided to split them into multiple videos. So this one. A very simple encounter, but quite fun. We don't even have to draw it, let's, let's do it like this. So let me give you some context here. My players have been exploring this mega dungeon and at one point like they get involved with this thieves guild and the stuff happens. And then you have this room, which is like this uh, old mine turned church type of thing. And it has like a statue in the middle and like an altar. It has some pillars on the sides and some uh, like glowing rock uh, lighting veins are in the walls and from time to time they like start sparking. On the ceiling there are platforms where some archers are and on these pillars there is like also platforms. You have benches and these crystals that are suspended from the top that are creating like these two vaguely greenish fluorescent light circles. So whenever I wanted to roll for a timer I'm too like sometimes distracted to actually switch the dice, so I made like a little timer thing in the notebook. It makes it easier for me to, to keep track of stuff. But anyways, there is a lever behind the statue and that lever disables the statue. Why disables it? Because if the statue is attacked or caught in any AOE attack, it will come alive and attack the um, players or whoever uh, damages it. So if the enemies damage it, it will attack them. Uh, all the enemies have like this moral thing, so when they're low HP, I roll 1d6 and see if it's uh, 1, 2, 3, they run away. If it's 4, 5, 6, they change side and help the players. Considering there is a statue and a lot of enemies attacking the players, all the help they can get is useful. Now, what are these things on the side? Well, they are also uh, timers, all of them. So what I would do is, let me get this out of the way and we can view this as that room. So. We had some pillars, right? Let's say there is four. I had some platforms that I put on top, but I don't have them anymore. We had, I don't know, like a platform here with a statue, some stairs leading up to it, whatever. But this is the cool part. So what I would do is I would say like, um, these dice are here, here. Let's move this all the way to here. Let's make it kind of like three spaces in between. I don't know, the, the arrangement is not that important, but what is important is that you look at the numbers on the top of your the fours. So now you remember the timer that I had in the notebook. Now you would count the rounds. First round, you activate all the dice that have one on the top. And second one, you activate all the ones that have two. You do this constantly. and. And you don't have to re-roll them, just to let them be like this and keep track of like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And what happens when these are activated? Well, uh, the walls, the lightning that is like going through the veins of the magic crystal in the walls just has a surge and everything in the straight line from here is damaged. On the hex, I would do it something like this, two, one, two, one, two. But if you have a square grid, it's even like easier. If you're using like a gridless system, you can use like a ruler or something, just see if anything is in the line of fire. And if it is still, you have like a DC something. I think it was 17 for my part at the time. 
to dodge out of the way of this. These would sporadically like uh, shoot these things and damage players and enemies. Now the two circles that were like suspended from the ceiling, like the lights, what they did is uh, they made the enemies incorporeal. So not really, not totally. You can still deal damage. It's not like your sword is gonna go through the enemy, but it made it harder to hit them. It made them go through walls and stuff. So it was pretty annoying for the players. And my players figured out that these circles uh, where they intersect the, the enemies are completely invincible, but here you, they can still damage them. And what happened was they actually like took down one of the chandeliers and it fell down and I was still tracking its position and it was still modifying the enemies to being corporeal in that position. So it's not that complicated, it's uh, dynamic, it's a very simple encounter, yet my players had uh, so much fun. At one point someone did hit the statue, the statue became alive, started hitting everyone, attacking everyone, and the players found the lever and disabled it. So, a simple thing, pretty fun. So there you go, I hope you found something uh, entertaining or useful in this video. If you like what you're seeing, consider subscribing. For every subscriber I get, I have a bonus to my AC the next time that giant squid monster is attacking me. So other than that, I've made a Discord channel. I'm trying to spread the word because I really think we can make a wonderful community of creative people that are into arts and philosophy and maybe some tech stuff and anything that tickles the mind. So I hope I will be seeing you there, but regardless, I bid you Farewell, Keeper.